Right, so... We're so it's in. a similar system, isn't it? We've yeah. got a desert planet that we can spawn on. It's a little bit larger than the last one, I think, on, yes. uh, on the Voice of War system. And then on the moon here, the moon actually looks a tiny bit smaller to me as well. So we've got a slightly larger planet, a slightly smaller planet, but still only two that can be spawned on. Yeah, it's really quite a closely matched system in this instance. Although the desert planet in the system we just played on had more water, this one doesn't. Yeah. So there's more there's more ground area. Looks like metal distribution and spores have uh, changed. <laughs> Which is unfortunate, because it is very important in the game to be knowing where you're spawning and where they're spawning and what you're going to do because of that. <laughs> <laughs> Voice of War apparently have some good spawns. <laughs> so, rip the planet generation, apparently. <laughs> well, the players will just have to make the best of a bad situation here as they approach their time limit for spawning in. Mm, they're going to be spawning pretty quick. Should be happening soon. <laughs> Lots of pings going out from orange. Go here, go here, go here! <laughs> Five seconds. Yep. And here we go with the game launch. Hello and welcome everybody, I'm z 4 and we are here with Clan Wars Season 1 presented by ExodusEsports.com and I'm joined here today by Marshall. Hello there, and yes, this is Burning vs Voices of War on uh, Burning's Home... Uh, yes, Burning's Home system this time round. And uh, it looks as though two players for each team have spawned on both spawnable planets, yep. Arrakis and Krellin. Yep, so the moon is pretty small. We're going to see a lot of action here. Um, and then probably on the desert planet, I think they're going to be ones that are going to be concentrating on orbital. If they can, squeeze out an orbital, start getting into some of all these other planets that are available to them. There is no metal available on the metal planets. So that is very much just a strategic position for the laser. The gas giant is obviously a great position to take hold of because there's so much eco there. Um, and then the ice planet is pretty small, but it's a nice place to be able to lock down because it's such a small planet. Yeah, it's an incredibly small planet, and if you lock it down, you can then send it with a single engine careering across space and smashing if you want it to. One engine is very cheap to be smashing a planet, so pretty yeah. powerful to be trying to control that early. And you're not going to lose too much eco by doing it either. Whoa. Whoops. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. If that had become unplugged, then that would have been very bad. Anyway, action already beginning to happen on the moon now as we've got tanks moving in towards each other as the commanders again getting really quite close. What is it with these commanders? It's like they have some sort of attraction. <laughs> yep, not a surprise. They're going to be this close. You have to battle with your commanders. We're going to lose. I really want to see some walls from both teams right now because there's no walls and this commander's taking a lot of damage. This commander's already down to 80%. That's quite that a bit of pain. And the other one is at, uh, not down quite so much, so yeah. it's really not looking great, although he is taking down damage now, 74 oh, to wow, 64. This could be GD's. You want to call the winner of this game quickly before it's like, already decided? <laughs> Marty, go. Um, go. No. Winner, Marshall. No, are you going to wuss out? I don't... Are you going to wuss out? I'm muting you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because if Burning keep up the pressure here, then they're going to lose out on factory production because they're so focused on building walls and stuff, while the other Voices of War Commander can keep building production and whatnot. While on Desert, that's, there's well, there's just going to be all the fighting that happens. But I think it depends on how hard Burning push this comboxing. Because now oh, this, is, this is mad. They've been so aggressive. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they, maybe they can win it back, but they're both building two pelters now. One pelter's just finished, another pelter's almost halfway through. And they sent in their tanks down here and destroyed that pelter, which was built by Voice of War. Both teams kind of saw how well the pelters went in that last game. Yeah. They try and take advantage of that now. Here Commander comes the commander moving over oh, Uber, Uber Cannon. Uber Cannon does no damage to the War building, but the last few shots. Oh, can it oh, save it? Walls. No! Oh, the walls! <laughs> the walls save it! Oh, yes. with the commander! Oh, oh. beautiful. <laughs> 
was good Saving that, that Pelter. Pelter. Now down to 25%. He was so focused on getting that Pelter. <laughs> the Pelter now being repaired as well. Yeah. One Pelter has just gone up in the base of Voice of War, though. They're probably going to use that to try and target down the Pelter and take care of it. But now being hit by two Pelters. The Pelter's actually focusing down on the Commanders. He's sitting on 18%. And that Commander could go down if he doesn't get out of range of that Pelter in time. Sitting on 16%. Hmm. Oh, wow. Down to 13. The other Pelter from uh, Burning does go down. <laughs> what is going on? Like, what's your prediction, Zayford, having seen this? <laughs> I'm sticking with Burning, man. I'm sticking with Burning. <laughs> they got out their early pelters, and they were way more aggressive early on, and it's paying off for them. The walls did not work out for Voice of War, and losing that much damage on the commander is a huge loss, because you can't repair that damage, and, and it just makes them much, much weaker on this planet right now. Yeah, but they do have a lot of bombers to defend, but Tank's moving in on that injured commander now. Will they see him and target him down? I don't think they see him just yet. They're just about to as he starts to run away. Will they catch on to him? They see him. Will the ping go off as he's on oh, uh, very little health walls. walls. I don't think walls. so. There he goes. One down from Val. Ouch. Wolves, wolves are in completely the wrong location there. So yeah. that's going to hurt them a little bit. They now have no command. That's less DPS and less tankiness on the field. Um, and it leaves their main base open, they've got less build power as well. So, really here, Burning need to be very aggressive. I'm, I don't know why they're not moving in both commanders right now. Mm. They've, got, oh, they've got to be careful of the turrets, that's the problem. That's why they can't really walk in. Well, the pelters, you... though, the counter pelters coming out from Voice of War have done really well. Finally, one of those pelters goes down from Voice of War, that first one that was built. Another one's still pelting in and attacking at their pelters. So that's the one thing that Voice of War have done really well. They've attacked pelters and they've force fired on them, whereas Burning have just let them bombard and do minuscule damage to unimportant things, mm. um, which is a big mistake. Although one of Burning's commanders on the moon there, down to 53%. Uh, I'm just having a look at the desert planet right now. We've got a lot of bombers out for the burning players. They seem to have reasonably good air control right now as they're trying to defend against any tank pushes and they're even beginning to move into the orbital layer as well. I think uh, maybe they consider having taken out a commander they feel it's probably safe to uh, to go and deal with the, the orbital shenanigans now. But they do have so much air control on this planet here. But Voice of War have a lot more in general. They have more units on that planet, more ground units, and they're beginning to take more map control. I mean, look at the mechs they've captured over here and captured over there. That's a lot of mechs and a lot of map control. It's really paying off for them. Um, and I guess we do see some mechs actually being picked up on the opposite side of the planet by burning, but they just seem particularly vulnerable. No defences, no turrets, no units, no production near them. Just very vulnerable. Val are actually behind on mobile unit count right now by about, uh, well, 10. They're closing the gap very, very quickly. It's, it's because indeed. they have no units on the moon and all of their units are on the desert planet, though. Yeah. So they have the advantage on the desert planet. Um, I'm going to swap over and look back at the moon because tanks have come through and destroyed most of the main base that was here amongst all these blackened wreckages and more units coming in. They're taking a lot of damage from the turrets and stuff, but they managed to take care of a pelter, which means that was all worth it. Oh, the second pelter going to be focused down! Second pelter gets taken out. That's a really important win. Not only are those worth quite a bit of metal, so it still actually works out cost effectively. Taking care of those pelters and stopping them bombarding your base is a really important, uh, a really important win, and that's going to help them. They do have much less units on the moon, but they've done quite a bit of lasting damage to Voice of War. We've got to give huge credit to Voice of War here on the moon. They've expanded really well and captured metal at the back of their base, and they've rebuilt a whole load of production here, so that even though they've completely lost the front lines and their main base, they have a lot of production. They have still the infrastructure to keep contesting this moon. And you say that because Burning's production is not increasing right now on the moon. And they mm. could get caught out by this. I think maybe mm. they've been lulled into a slightly false sense of security. Another ping going off there. They're, I think they're focusing down the commanders a little bit too much. Mm. And I think that's going to end up in the long term leaving their own commanders oh, exposed. teleporters coming in from the desert planet. So oh. we're going for the desert planet. Ooh, I wow. think Voice of War are calling the shots. They're the ones that are sending in all the ground units and really calling the shots here. So they're just going to ease off a bit and send all their units through the moon. And this could be the comeback, I think, for Voice of War. And I think you hit it nail on the head there. Burning aren't building more factories on the moon and that's what's really going to hurt them. They kind of I don't think they have enough intel to realise that they aren't in such a good position as they think they are. Yeah, I mean a Kamala kill is one thing but losing a base is quite another and I think they are definitely at risk of doing so. Are you frozen right now? I am. Being a simulation is frozen temporarily. One can hope. See what happens. So, uh, 
uh Peter mentions in chat that if Burning win this, then uh, they actually go above Voices of War. Ah. Oh, sorry, if Voice of War wins, then they'll um, overtake Burning in the final standings. Quite important. Oh, I've crashed. Uh, don't look it. They've got two on each planet. Oh, they actually looks maybe same spawns or similar. Yeah, pretty pretty legit. Oh, man. Look at the Burning players. Oh, we got back in. Look at the Burning players on the moon. Yeah. They have no medal. No medal compared to blue. Doesn't help, but it does make it harder. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Comrush! <laughs> yeah, you're going to be under intense pressure early game anyway, but if you have five mechs really close to you, it's much easier than if you only have two mechs close to you. Yeah. Well, hello and welcome, everybody. <laughs> to the final fixtures of Clan Wars Season 1, uh, presented by ExodusEsports.com. We have Burning vs. Voice of War. I'm Zayfordex, and I'm joined here by Marshall. Hello, folks. And I couldn't help but think, Zayford, but you would seem to be getting tired of saying that. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> right, so... Again, it's as, as we said, we had that 4v4, Burning versus Voices of War on the Burning Home system. Two players have spawned on Arrakis and two players have spawned on the Moon, as we previously. Uh, so we're going to see pretty similar strats. An orbital rush from one of the Burning players on Arrakis, this is different. And bots rush from Burning on the Moon as well, this is definitely different. Oh, th I like this, I think this is a great move and... Uh... I think an orbital rush on the desert planet is, is absolutely the right play um, and it will really help them if it isn't scouted or noticed or done anything soon. Really early radar came up assisted by the commander from Voice of War there. This is exactly yeah. what they need to do. They need to know precisely where the enemies are and they need to know where all these early raiding docks are coming in. Early raiding docks are trying to get some pickups on these engineers, staying out of range of the commander, doing a pretty good job of just keeping the harassment up and not letting Voice of War get too settled. Wow, the docks rush. They just they just rush docks, docks factories. They've They've neglected any eco to get this early rush in. It's paying off yeah. for them at the moment. But we do see vehicles invested in from Voice of War. So maybe as time goes on, they get a couple more tanks, a bit of a bigger group, so they'll actually be able to defend against this relatively easily. Mm. I mean, the few fabricators have gone down for Voices of War. A few docks did manage to pick those off earlier in the game. But now the docks getting sandwiched between two commanders. They are oh, just going to position. disappear. Yeah, and the thing is that, that I think they're moving in too soon they're not going to get enough kills because the commanders are everywhere yeah I think as well because there's so much metal in such a small area they can't do quite as much raiding as they would have liked to um, good job trying to expand with this engineer it's a pity that engineer doesn't move off a little bit further because they're putting mm. so much pressure on now they kind of have free reign to try and grab a couple more mechs yeah. but bombers coming out so the bombers are going to help actually quite a bit for Voice of War that's working out well for them that orbital is it Orbital rush has already occurred. That commander's already off planet. He's onto the ice planet um, now. If wow. you look at that, it looks like just a factory next to an orbital factory. That's actually the base where he started. Um, he just immediately went off. It's just been scouted by Voices of War, though. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Voices of War really put the pressure on the desert planet. Yeah, I think that's going to be something they really need to do because then they can bring in reinforcements to the moon as well. And now that they know there's only one commander on the desert planet, I wouldn't be surprised if we already see a teleporter going up in the next uh, minute or so. Pelda started by Voice of War, focusing down that very, very quickly. <laughs> no way was that going up. do not want up. that Pelda to get up. Um, and they're now going to come straight through the base, exchanging fire. Can they get rid of the radar? That would be useful. No, they no. can't. They do manage to exchange fire and, re and reduce some of their numbers a bit, but... No, I really feel that commanders should be in on the action right now. Yeah, and because yeah, oh, they're yeah. not, I think they're throwing away a lot of their units, and that extra pressure would be huge. Not and only... Good job, however, along the back. They're stopping them getting the mechs that they did in the last game along the back of their base. Mm. And not only are they throwing away their units on the front, but they're also allowing Voices of War to build up the tanks that you talked about earlier. Mm. We actually mm. do see that build up now up to eight and uh, still increasing. Yeah, that's the last thing you want to be doing is, is coming up against large number of tanks. We see a switch up to boombox Booms, yeah. from, the, from the bottom base there. Only two of the factories out of four doing that. Um, they but we can't need to let see the, the commanders. What is this commander doing? Get in the action, get an Uber Cannon in there and start pushing. More Pelters going up, four engineers building out. This is a really big metal investment, particularly this early in the game, so not n n nothing to be sniffed at here. And Pelter's now going to turn around and start getting its firing in on the go. Can we get an Uber Cannon from this commander? Yes, we can. Off it goes. That was a Thanks good Uber Let's move forwards. 
<laughs> Taking a lot of damage now, though. Oh, down to 75. Oh, Move my goodness. No, there's too many walls. Oh, oh they go the cannon. Oh, but now the Rip. docks can move in from the north as well. Yeah. Oh, the Uber cannons. The cannons off. They did get some oh. fire over those walls, though. So good, oh, Uber no. cannons. And another one. There it goes. That was oh. really Ouch. as poor as it could get. <laughs> that is exactly how not to use bots. They threw away all of their bots for nothing. Mm. All of it for nothing. A great defensive play from Voice of War behind the walls, playing defensive, and really paying off for them. Interestingly, for burning, they've put both of their commanders from the desert planet on the ice planet. I'm not sure what to think about this right now. They have migrated off the desert planet completely, relieving it to Voices of War. Oh, I think okay. that's a bad move, considering yeah, that Voices of War are reasonably so entrenched on the moon. Much ground there. And they've actually have they sent units to a teleporter? Where they where's that teleporter coming from? Ice planet. Are they on the ice planet? Okay, we, well we need to cover that in a second. But for the moment, oh taking so much damage down below seventeen percent for this oh. uh, burning commander retreating commander trying to chase him. He came under so much fire. Oh the, oh, the bombers! Now, one pass. One no. No, no Marshall. Get no. At, at, at predicting Marshall. Jeez. <laughs> I thought the Pelter was going to take another shot. Oh, Jesus, God. Marshall. Wow. We're so 2000 and late. <laughs> uh, okay, Commander in here just really getting in a whole lot of action. Say so 38%, actually doing a half decent job of uh, disrupting, but coming under so much fire from nice. the Burning have lost the plot. I think I can't help but think that. Yeah. <laughs> half of their key presses are when they're falling asleep, and oh. the other half is when they're waking up. <laughs> one goes. One commander goes down. <laughs> they are losing the desert planet. They do, however, have Arbon. <laughs> Silver linings. Silver linings. <laughs> get onto Ravona. Oh, they're on Ravona. Okay, credit to them. They've managed to get into the orbital layer. They started on Ravona. Second jig going up. They have a lot of orbital fabbers that are actually building that. So it's going to go up very quickly. It's hurting their eco, no doubt. Um, but that will go up very quickly. So they at least have control of Arvon. They have control of the gas giant currently. They at least got their foot on it. They're going to lose the desert planet. They have nothing left on the desert planet, which is a big mistake. Mm. Back over at the moon. And they've lost their deep space radar as well. So if they don't get that back up, then uh, they will miss what uh, Voices of War are doing in the orbital air as they're now moving an orbital fabricator to the ice planet. Probably going to pop up a few out anchors. From both teams uh, saying, get the hell off that planet with that commander. <laughs> oh, those bombers. He's on 6%. I think that's three bombs, Marsh. It might even be two. Oh, oh wow, commander going down. Voices of war. Taking a lot of damage from some uh, some units there. He's down to 25%. Mm. Of course, the docks can catch up really quickly, but there are some units there in the way now, so probably not going to be able to chase him down too easily. Units coming in through the teleporter, though. They have all that production over on the ice plant. That's paying off for them as the tanks come forwards. Running in a little bit too close to the single oh, base the tower behind the walls. Teleporter up on the ice planet now as well in the back garden of the base over there. They're going to want to stop sending the units through the teleporter because that teleporter could go live from Voice of War any second. Yeah. That's really going to hamper things. But Burning, I think, is still in a strong situation as long as they can hold the ice planet here. Getting up anchors above that... Uh... Teleporter as well is going to make it a pain to get rid of because they have no anti-orbital there right now. Mm. And it's and amazingly, we've seen a huge turnaround and Voice of War look like they are very hemmed in on the moon right now. They do not look in a comfortable position. At the moment, the <laughs> craters are really working well because these tanks are not even firing and they're just getting hammered by the laser defense turrets. Oh dear, a commander taking damage from an anchor in oh, space yeah. there on the, uh, oh, the Astraeus. Thank He's going to try and reclaim the teleporter, but the commander's going to take quite a bit of damage already below. Ooh. Is he going to walk through the teleporter? Oh, oh dear. no! I thought he was. Oh dear. oh dear! Now the units come in. Oh, the commander! What they're, is they're he doing? The teleporter. The teleporter oh. goes down. Commander can now uber cannon. Oh Ooh. yeah, there we go. Not the best place, but I think okay considering the circumstances. Oh, look at this teleporter just been activated oh, on wow. the moon. Whole oh. load of units coming through from the desert planet there. And that is going to give them the reinforcements they need at this stage because they are really beginning to lose ground. As we see these docks coming in, they've bunched up into a big group now and coming in trying to destroy a lot of the northern side of that base on the moon. Another teleporter going up on the ice planet. Difficult situation for burning there. 
as it's very hard for them to actually counter, and they have no orbital oh. fire to destroy. What oh. happened there? Was that an Uber cannon from that commander? Yes, it was. It, it just took really everything out, and the, that big blob of docks managed to kill one mech and one turret. Wow. Not even a factory. Wow. And that commander was on 25%. He's still sitting on 21%. He's, he's fine. Yeah. And units now streaming through on the <laughs> ice planet. That commander's going to go down as he gets pelted. All those units also streaming through on the moon are going to start absolutely running over the base, stopping the reinforcements from that teleporter. One commander goes down on the ice planet. We're going to switch views as we take a little look at the ice planet. More units streaming through. A little bit slower now, but should still be able to contest this planet. Um, commander moving forwards, units also moving forwards. Pelder putting in some fire on that teleporter, trying to destroy it before more units come through. Um, but being run over on the moon now as well. All of those units moving forwards and beginning to reap through the base on the moon for burning. Mm, I think this is the end of it for burning. I must admit they are in a sticky situation. They're trying to get T2 vehicles up on the ice planet, but I don't think they're going to get there in time because they're going to be pushed back. And all the units on the moon as well. Oh dear. See, that teleport doesn't even have much life. More units streaming through. They were doing well at trying to contest it. But the anchor there, that anchor, I knew that anchor would come in useful. Building Doc's moving right in on the commander teleport. on the moon. Doc's moving in on the commander on the moon. They do manage to get an Uber cannon off. Will the commander survive? No, he will not. Will he? Oh, Yo! That was so risky. <laughs> do you see how risky it was? They were trying to save their docks there by getting them out of the newt range. They didn't even manage to save them in the end. But they nearly let that commander get away by <laughs> So, how many is that now to each player? I think that's one down from each team, or is it two? Is it not two? I think two of each. We see one commander residing on the moon for Voices of War. I think there's only one commander left for burning. There's two on Arrakis, so yeah, there's three Voices of War comms yeah. left. Three Voices of War, one for burning. T2 going up, that'll help, I guess. No, there's a Maybe. second one for burning on the moon, but uh, he's the injured one building factories. Uh, switch to army tab, says Jaguar. All 50 units of Voice of War, 150 <laughs> for burning. Oh, Boombot's coming in on the moon on that commander. They might get taken down, actually. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> on the moon? Yeah. Oh, what happened there? Burning's commander got Boombotted. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, rip the dream. <laughs> I think it's falling apart for burning. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> well, this has been entertaining. <laughs> I have got T2 vehicles up on the ice planet now, though, which is a welcome relief, considering that was that what they were working so hard to do. Uh, amazingly, they're still up on that moon. Mm. I really thought they would have been out, out by now, but holding on. So many units came through. Oh, wow, these T2 units reinforcements, yeah. So T2 reinforcements are now coming in from Arrakis. And... Uh, <coughs> oh dear. Whenever you see T2 units in a T1 fight, you know you're in a bit of trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to be legit. Twin shadows start melting into the mix. Oh, that's oh the anchor creeping as well on the oh, ice yeah. planet. Oh yeah. god, anchors are so good now against the ground. Yeah. They are so good. The fire rate's so high. <laughs> it's just <laughs> zoom, 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 zoom. the reason they don't accurate as well. Damage, but yeah, they are accurate. Consistent damage coming in, it's just one popping every second and a half. <laughs> They're going to have to retreat, but the thing is, they haven't really got many umbrellas up, and again, it's just going to be a case of pushing in with those uh, those umbrellas. And um, all they, of... they, okay, that sheller there did destroy the teleporter. <laughs> so, they now only... Uh -huh, have to deal with uh, all of these anchors and that damn orbital fabric that is still have absolute free reign over his base. In the immediacy, yes. However, that fab is going to go and uh, pop up another teleporter rather than an anchor now, I shouldn't, shouldn't wonder. Yeah, around the backside of the base would be a good location. The moon has finally been lost. Arrakis was won a long time ago. Arvon is being fought over... We do see Voices of War have actually landed on the metal planet, getting up radar and anti-orbital defences there. Oh wow, they lost the... Okay, they lost the gas giant. Rip. GG. Yeah. They lost that a long time ago, I think. And Burning putting up three P-Gens on the moon. Just a little bit of power there. But now the teleporter's up. Lone Docks comes through as a little scouting party. A Boombot tests the water as well. Second <laughs> teleporter. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, being focused down really quick, Shell is putting in quite a lot of fire on the teleporter. Oh no, there's too many oh. units. Yeah, too many units. Don't forget they can shellers. always send a fabricator through it as well, because then Second they can establish... Well. Yeah, ah. Uh, if they send a fabricator through, they can establish a beachhead. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's... that's... the third... third teleporter. Yeah, that's... that's the game, I think. Burning really can't do anything about this. Which is unfortunate, and they don't even have an Astraeus to escape with, so... <laughs> <clears throat> yep, there's units coming through, Inferno's leading the way, taking down those factories nicely, also focusing down the T2. They actually need to take down that T2 so they can actually get in here. The bit in the way. Oh, the shell of fire! The oh. shell of fire on the commander, destroying all the units around him. He falls down to 40%. And he's going to end it here as the shellers keep coming in. Ants aren't firing on him just yet. Why that on earth are they moving the units legit. back? There oh, we go. Down he up. goes with the GG. So that is Burning and Voice of War's last games in Clan Wars Season 1. It is. Let's talk to the players. Hello, folks. GGs. Yeah, good game. Yep. GG. I was unfortunate about having the spawns broken. Well, there were some emails about it, I think. But, you know, that's the way the cookie grumbles. <laughs> oh, I like that cookies. <laughs> oh, this... <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had issues with our core players that started with Clan Wars six months ago, becoming in more and more inactive as time goes on, and some of the new players in Burning that are very keen to get into Clan Wars haven't been allowed to sign up, which was part of our issue. <laughs> yeah, we we know this issue too. Yeah, I blame yeah. Pitch. He is like literally a dictator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Since well, season one's nearly today. over, so you know, season two we can mix up the rules a bit and uh, and and learn yeah. from our mistakes. I think I think that's a fantastic idea. I mean, even just with uh, with the amount of players that now play or ha have played, seeing as the game has been around longer, yeah, exactly, it, uh, you know. add, adds a lot more people to be able to add to a roster. I mean, mm. a team burning may even be able to field two teams. Yeah. Yeah, the amount of players that we have now. We'll, we'll get some options going because uh, you know it's been going on for months. Clan Wars, right? So you're always going to get new people joining, new people suddenly wanting to get in on it. And uh, I think we need to maybe relax the rules around entry and and that sort of thing. I agree with that. Even if you just have it so that the people have to be signed up and registered at least a week beforehand, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. And they so should that... not be allowed to switch teams in the middle. Yep, that's fair enough. Yeah, so there we go. I think that's our Team Burning's last game. Same for us. It is. I think Voice of War actually move ahead of Team Burning in the standings. Oh, so... no. <laughs> oh, no. So, sorry, guys, but Voice of War is better than Burning. Oh! Oh! It's been... Uh... Oh, damn. <laughs> it's been thrown down. And if you try and come up with a comeback, I should just say, isn't it your bedtime? <laughs> uh, it's way past my bedtime, actually. <laughs> to be honest. Especially our New Zealand guys. It's now 3.30 in the morning for them, and I think as soon as that game finished, they were hitting the pillows. Hard. Don't blame them. So... Uh... <sighs> A bit of a weird game. I like the fact we went for weird strats. I can't actually open the corner cam. It seems to be totally broken. But um, at the uh, at the start, you um, you seem to you rushed orbital very fast on Ar Arrakis. That uh, that was me. Unfortunately, we had Mish uh, time out due to graphical errors, so he All didn't right. get to select his spawn. So the commander that spawned in the middle of nowhere with absolutely no mechs around him, we just decided to go orbital and see if, see how that went. Mm. 
might not have been the best move, but unfortunately being forced into a spawn like that, there's not really much you can do from there. Yeah, it was unfortunate. It seemed like it seemed like you sort of gave up on Arrakis. You didn't really invest much in it, and you were sort of investing a lot into trying to win the moon. That's correct. We we know, especially playing that system a lot, we know that the, the moon will turn the tide. Mm. The main planet's a lot easier to invade and contest than yeah. the moon. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Unfortunately, we weren't able to push you guys off the moon, so that was that was kind of the end of that game. Yeah. Uh, Voices of War. Is, Cry is Cryo in the room? Yes. Yeah. Um, but did you go for anything special there? It seemed like you just played a solid game, nothing fancy, just playing solid, simple, yeah, I effective. Uh, yeah, on the moon, I was always on the moon as usual, and I didn't see what else happened around, but on the moon we just did more factories, more units, more factories, more units. Mm. I think, um... Burning were pushing you back quite a bit on the moon at one point, and you lost a lot of your main bases, and then you suddenly just started building factories towards the back. Was, yeah. that, was that the previous game? Am I confused now? I can't look through Chronicam right now. It's really it, annoying. It was uh, in both games similar, I think. All oh, right. <laughs> but uh, the, the moon seems certainly like a, a difficult battle for both teams. You were really fighting for it. Uh. The docks as well. Uh, Chronicam appears to be finally working now. Um, so... You seem to throw away a lot of docks. Like it was really good defense from Voices of War. Um, but behind the walls, one of your commanders was being attacked a lot and somehow did not die. <laughs> was that you, Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah I think oh. it was me in the, in the north. I was in the north on the moon. Yeah. Uh. I think uh, you had some great defensive play there. A lot of the attacks coming in from yeah, Burnings did was, not seem to be pulled off. It was off also on. some lucky uh, Uber cannons that mm. hit a lot. Hmm. But why did you go for docks on the moon rather than maybe something else like tanks or infernos? Uh, psycho. Um, it's just a strategy that that our two guys on the moon do usually use. Um, a heavy dock strat. Mm. But I think they were starting to feel the time, and they weren't looking to have a long game. It was an all or nothing strat. Yeah, yeah. If it works, if it works, it works beautifully. If it doesn't, the, the game doesn't last very long. Yeah, fair enough. Docs, I think docs can be really, really powerful. I just, I think the the, the situations you got into and the defence from uh, from Voice of War just it it meant that confrontations you got into did not work out too well for you. <laughs> yes, that's correct. They defended their bases really well. Mm. Yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with the strat necessarily. It's just the execution didn't work out too well. I can't disagree with that. Okay. Well, GG's. Uh, thank you, both teams, for turning up and participating in Clan Wars Season 1. Yeah, um, I would hope that we see you in Clan Wars Season 2. Not a problem. I'm sure we'll be fielding a team. Great stuff. All right. Thank you, guys. Cheers, guys. See you. Yeah.